This is the Bristol most of us are familiar with, stop-start traffic. Every junction, another holdup. And yet, despite having some of the most clogged streets in the country, Bristol's congestion could actually be a lot worse. At the city's traffic control centre, they try to keep things moving, with cameras monitoring every major junction. Not much happens without it being seen here. So all this and your team are just trying to keep the lights green for me, are they? The idea of the system is to smooth the flow as much as possible, is, is to keep your journey flowing. It's based around essentially reducing pollution, because there's less pollution when you are flowing smoothly than when you're stopping and starting. Sensors hidden under the tarmac detect traffic patterns and adjust traffic-like sequences accordingly. But even then, it doesn't take much to disrupt the smooth flow. Bristol works relatively well if we don't have anything going wrong. Um, as soon as something goes wrong, we have no spare capacity. So when you have an incident, there's very few places that the traffic can go to. The system allows Bristol's roads to carry substantially more traffic than they otherwise could. Without it, the city would be at a standstill. A few years ago, the system broke down for a day and the whole city centre gridlocked. It has a very significant impact on, on how the traffic operates. So keeping on top of Bristol's road network has its limits and there isn't room for any more traffic. But what if the answer is not getting rid of the cars, but drivers? Across the channel, a revolution is taking place. In La Rochelle, on the west coast of France, six electric driverless shuttles follow routes around the city centre, carrying real passengers. OK, so this is where you do all your magic, aren't you? Yeah. It's part of an experiment called City Mobile 2, operating in several European countries. What exactly is so special about this? Where are the special secret bits? Here we have the haze of the vehicle with ultrasonic sensors that uh, can detect people in uh, volume. Here we have laser beam that can detect people at long range. And finally, we have a bumper that is the final safety system. If you press this, the vehicle stops immediately. What do we have up there? On the roof, there's another laser and a GPS system accurate to within two centimetres, all to help the vehicle work out exactly where it is. So altogether, we've got the GPS centimetres, we've got the 270 degree laser to find where it is. Down here, we've got ultrasonic. We've got that tiny laser getting out there for long distance, and if it all goes a little bit too close for comfort, you got the bumper. Exactly. Now I know it's safe, time for me to take a ride. Hello, welcome aboard. So this is it. This is it, autonomous mobility. And there we are, we're now going for a ride. As you can see, there is nobody driving, there's nobody accelerating, and I don't even need to watch the road. We can carry on talking and have a nice conversation. Speak for yourself. This is a little bit weird. Weird? I would not say so. I mean, that's well, no, but you're used to today. it. You're used to it. I'm sitting in a bus and no one is driving it. And we're about to cross a road with cars on. I might be nervous, but the locals have really taken to autonomous travel. That said, what happens when the shuttle meets a French driver not doing exactly what's expected. Now, this is very interesting because the vehicle stopped by itself. We didn't have to intervene. It came into our safety zone, so we had an emergency stop. And there we are, we're going off again. There is no more any obstacle. We're going back off. She's talking to the police up there. She's a bit uh, She's concerned. probably going to get fined because she's probably not allowed to drive on this road. So the sensors appear to work. But here on Inside Out West, we like to be absolutely certain of these things. 
<laughs> that is close. You know the theory, you know it's got sensors and all sorts of clever stuff, but that's very close. Back on board, Manuel tells me where he thinks driverless technology is heading in the future. So it's great having one or two of these things, but is your dream to have hundreds, thousands? Probably thousands, yes. I mean, you have heavy congestion in Bristol, so you could imagine that people would park their cars outside the city centre and then they could hail these autonomous buses working like taxis. They would come to them at the car parks and then take them wherever they want into the inner city, which, which would be fully car-free. Manuel thinks that driverless vehicles could replace privately owned cars in cities altogether. That would mean fewer vehicles on the roads, so less congestion and lower emissions. For Bristol, that future might not be far off. The city's been awarded a share of £19 million of government funding and three years to come up with something driverless. The ultimate goal is one in which traffic lights are removed altogether as driverless cars communicate with each other to pick the perfect route through the city, ending congestion forever. We've just been to France, we've seen these driverless pods, rather curious things, but actually on the streets. When will we see one of those here in Bristol? So in the next 12 months you're going to see a pod similar to the one that you've seen in France in Bristol. And this will initially be in the University of the West of England campus, and then as we understand how it works and we're confident that it does work, we will start to take that out onto the streets. Do you think Bristolians are really going to go for that? I mean, I've heard so many people saying, oh, we're going to have flying cars and all kinds of things, and we still have old-fashioned cars going old-fashioned streets with old-fashioned traffic jams. Do you think it's actually going to change? Are we on the cusp of something here? I believe that all of the, many of the technologies that are required for cars to become autonomous or self-driving are already there. The really difficult bit is that, is that this is quite a disruptive idea. It disrupts your relationship with your car. It disrupts me as a pedestrian in terms of knowing what the rules are. So it's getting the social change right, the legislation right, the insurance right. But I think the technology is far more mature than, than, than perhaps you're suggesting. Bristol's roads are very nearly at capacity with clever technology the only thing preventing gridlock. In driverless cars, there is a green solution that could end congestion. It sounds a radical, almost impossible step, but perhaps it's not as far off as we might think. <laughs>